Almost Heaven, West Virginia. The song lyrics are strangely loved and known by people all around the world, yet many have not witnessed the majestic mountains and spectacular beauty of our mountain state. 100 Things WV is a podcast about all things West Virginia, designed to go along with our newly published 100 Things to Do in West Virginia Before You Die book, part of a national book series by Reedy Press. Food, outdoor attractions, parks, festivals, breweries, books, boutiques, hotels, sporting events, museums, and more will be discussed in this bi-monthly podcast airing on Travel Tuesdays. I'm Melody Pittman, co-author of the book, established blogger and influencer, and new podcaster. I hope you'll join me. Hey everybody, I'm Melody. Welcome to episode five of 100 Things WV Podcast. I'm coming at you from Mesquite today. It's six more days until I head to West Virginia for four months straight to do a book tour. Pretty excited about that. For now, I have the adorable Anna Cook as my special guest. Anna, can you introduce yourself and tell us about yourself? Hey, yeah, I'm super happy to be here. So um, my name is Anna. I run the travel blog Stuck on the Go. It focuses on, you know, small towns in the U.S. with a big focus on, you know, the Southeast because I'm based in North Carolina. Um, I do a lot of outdoor adventure stuff. And so that's I'm happy to be talking about, you know, hiking in West Virginia today and snowboarding because my husband and I, we love it up there. And if you want to connect with me, uh, you can find me, I guess I'm most active on Facebook and Instagram at Stuck on the Go. I just started posting on TikTok, so we'll see how that goes. (laughs) Um, uh, Same handle, at Stuck on the Go, and then Twitter as well. Oh, good gravy. The kind made from real premium sausage. The kind that's smothered over deliciousness. The kind you can only get at Tudor's Biscuit World. That's the gravy that's oh so good. It's the perfect topping to your biscuits or your taters and even makes a delicious side. It's oh so good gravy. Tudor's Biscuit World. We're dripping with oh good gravy. Okay, so Anna is part of our, what we call hashtag STE family. And in the past two years, her career has just like taken off. It's been fantastic to watch her grow. We're really proud of her. She's the real deal. So like when you talk about authentic, that's Anna. And we love that. So Anna goes to West Virginia all the time, all the time. And so uh, Taylor and I are always texting each other and saying, Anna's in West Virginia again. (laughs) So anyway, we know you love the mountain state. We know you spend a lot of time, a lot of dollars there. So what's your favorite thing to do in West Virginia? Yeah. So like I said, I mean, we uh, absolutely love West Virginia. Um, And I guess I started going often, really when, uh, you know, I met Tyler Mm -hmm. and he uh, loves whitewater rafting in West Virginia. I mean, he's, he's a kayaker. And so we uh, definitely go up there, you know, in the summers for him, him to kayak. I would say though, my favorite thing to do up there, gosh, I don't know. It's so hard, but I do love to (laughs) hike. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Um, And so you know, I love the New River Gorge. I was happy, you know, when they made it a national park. Oh, yeah. Um, the, yeah. And we love Snowshoe. We we had a condo at Snowshoe for a couple of years that we okay. rented out. And so, but yeah, I would say my favorite thing is to hike. Okay. And your favorite hiking areas or paths? So at New River Gorge, um, I have done the Long Point Trail. And that's the one where I think it's around like one and a half miles one way. But it's an out and back trail. And at the end of the trail, you have this gorgeous view of the bridge. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's it's just absolutely beautiful. That one. And then Tyler and I recently did the Kmore Miners Trail. Mm-hmm. And that's a little bit different, but you you get to see sort of like the remains of that, I guess you'd call it like a mining camp. Right. And so it's, it's really, really neat, um, but it's a very difficult trail. Okay. Um, <laughs> I guess I, you know, was not prepared for how strenuous it was going to be. But I mean, like you are going down the side of the mountain and then you have to come back up. Yeah. Uh, so it's a short trail, but it is very difficult. Okay. Uh, yes. The other area is in Blackwater Falls State Park. Mm-hmm. And honestly, the Canaan Valley area is so great for hiking because you've got Blackwater Falls, you've got Canaan Valley State Park, and then there's the Dolly Sods Wilderness area right there as well. But in Blackwater Falls State Park, of course, you've got the iconic Blackwater Falls hike. It's a very short hike, but it's almost 
all stairs. So if you have mobility issues, you ha will have to uh, get, there's an overlook that you can stop at that's on the way to the main lodge. And that will be the best view and area for the falls. But the trail will kind of take you down to uh, where you're at eye level with mm -hmm. the falls because they're huge. I, I don't know how tall they are, right. but I mean, they're really big. And so it's really impressive getting to stand there on that overlook. Right. I did that one. I actually did that hike. And uh, Angie, my co-author, she waited at the top because she had a knee issue. And so I went down to the bottom. This was right after a uh, pandemic. So August, I guess, of 2020. And the nice thing was I passed three people along the way, single people, and they were taking their pictures and all this sort of thing, not doing a very good job with selfies. And I was like, can I take your picture? And all of them had such a unique story. Like they were checking off a bucket list. One man was like 60 years old and he'd wanted to do all these um, hikes and state parks, national parks, and all this sort of thing his whole life. So he was just taking himself on a road trip to 10 states. I was like, how cool is that? Oh, that is so cute. <laughs> and it, it gave me a reason to rest without like, you know, acting <laughs> like I was really uncool and couldn't make it. <laughs> I'll take your yeah. picture. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a lot of stairs. I, yeah. I was surprised. <laughs> it is a nice platform though. I mean, anybody just to walk out to that big platform, that's really nice. Yes, for sure. I mean, and so I've seen it in winter and in summer. And so when I visited in the winter, I think it was negative six degrees Ooh. and almost the entire falls were frozen. But I will say the the stairs, like the snow had basically packed down and rounded over. Mm -hmm. So the the fall hazard there was right. <laughs> enormous. <laughs> so out here, you know, I'm near Zion. That's my closest national park. I'm 90 minutes from Zion. And Zion is all of a sudden, like, it was kind of the redheaded stepchild of the Utah parks for years. Then COVID hit and Zion's on fire. Like, it is packed all the time. So if you go during any time of the year, it's beautiful. But winter, oh my God, it's just exceptional. So like my numbers whenever I share like a video or pictures they're like six times more in the winter because the snow makes it look so pretty <laughs> so. oh my goodness but the other waterfall there is Elakala Falls and I mean it's really pretty too it the trailhead for it starts at the lodge and I don't it's rated as moderate but I don't remember it being that hard now okay. if you want to climb down to the base of the falls then yeah that okay. that takes a little bit of scrambling mm -hmm. um but it's it's another really pretty waterfall that's, right. you know, worth the hike. So I'm curious, when you go to like the base of a waterfall, do you get in the water when you get there? Uh, it depends. I mean, I, I usually try and look at like if there are any safety concerns, um, mm -hmm. because like here in North Carolina, uh, one of the popular waterfalls is Linville Falls, you know, and you are not allowed to to get in the water at the Ooh. at the base of the falls because mm -hmm. apparently like it, the water is so turbulent that right. like there are deaths, you know, okay. uh, from people getting in. So if it's shallow, you know, I'll, I'll get my feet wet and everything. Mm -hmm. The other thing is like, I don't love you know, getting in the water and then having to hike out, you know, yeah. in kind of like wet clothes right. and everything. I don't know. I just don't <laughs> like that feeling. <laughs> I was in a Coney County down to see Ken and I, Eddie and I did what was supposed to be a moderate hike. It was like way more than moderate. It was really, really tough. And I'd screwed up my medicine. So like I had not had blood pressure medicine in 28 days. I didn't know this until I thought I was going to die getting out of there, but it was summer. It was hot. And I, we just go like this. Okay. We're driving along. We're going to go shopping. No, let's go do this hike. Okay. So we hike down there. I don't have anything to drink, nothing at all. Eddie brings a water bottle with him. I have nothing. So I get down there and I'm like literally cupping the water and it's so clean. I mean, it was good water. So I fill it up and I'm, I take my shirt off, I get my shirt wet, put my shirt back on. So at least I'm cool hiking out, you know? <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Oh. That wasn't um, Yellow Branch yes, Falls, was it? Was it was okay. <laughs> yeah. I saw that y'all did that one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That, I mean, that's a pretty tough one. Yeah, especially when you had not prepared for it and, you know, like you had your medicine wrong. But, you know, like when I get up to the top and I'm heaving, laying on a picnic table, I'm like, okay, something is wrong. Like, I'm not this out of shape. Like, what's going on? Yeah, that's when I found out. After we, when we started RVing, literally, I'd gotten some medicine in West Virginia. It's a different color. So I had two of like cholesterol pill and no blood pressure pill. So oh, my God. I was like, oh, God. Yeah. So live and learn. <laughs> okay. So you are on another, on another note, you're a snowboarder. Not yes, a skier, um, a snowboarder. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Okay. My husband is a skier and I snowboard. I mean, not well, but I okay. did. And so you've been to, have you been to three ski resorts in West Virginia or all four? 
So I, okay, I have personally gone snowboarding at Snowshoe and Winter Place, but I've gone with Tyler when he mm-hmm. has gone up to Timberline and mm-hmm. uh, Canaan Valley Ski Resort. Those okay. are like right beside each other. Right. But I haven't, you know, done any of the slopes. So on a just first impressions without doing the slopes, just like what it looks like, which one of those is the more wow factor? Wow factor would definitely be snowshoe. I mean, okay. snowshoe is it's going to be the best snow, the best mountain. I mean, it it is the best ski resort in the Southeast for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, But you pay for that. And I've never been. (laughs) Seriously, (laughs) I've never been to Snowshoe. Like, I'm going to remedy that this summer. (laughs) I know. Yes. I mean, you definitely need to. That's that's like an iconic West Virginia location. So Snowshoe, great snowboarding. And uh, can you tell me about the lodge or for people who don't know anything about the lodge like me or staying there? Um, what's that like? At Snowshoe, instead of, I guess, like the the traditional like one lodge, it is a village and it's almost got like a European flair kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there are multiple different, I guess, lodging options in the village and then at the base of the mountain. Okay. Um, so when we uh, had a condo up there, it was in Mountain Lodge mm-hmm. um, and that is sort of it's it's at the top of ball hooter lift the other thing about snowshoe is it's sort of like inverted from typical uh ski resorts because the village is at the top of the mountain Ooh, and okay. you yeah usually yeah. with ski resorts the village is at the bottom but yeah there are lots of great lodging options you know in the village um the ones that are really nice are allegheny springs i think rimfire is pretty nice mm-hmm. i've heard about um, that one Yes. And those are like, I mean, right there in in the immediate village. Um, There's lots of shopping opportunities there. If you're on a budget, though, you can still do snowshoe. We have actually stayed at Elk River Inn, which is about 20 minutes from the village. Mm -hmm. And then we've also actually stayed in Marlinton when we were on a very strict (laughs) budget. Um, Well, we stayed at um, the Old Clark Inn. And gosh, I cannot remember. I mean, we went to like this little pizza place. And then the last time that we stayed there, they had recently opened like a little bar okay. um, beside the pizza place. And so right. those are kind of like the main places that we right. went. Yeah. Okay. Did you have any memorable meals at Snowshoe when you were there? So I love the Sunset Cantina. Uh, mainly because so it's Mexican food. I love their chicken burrito. (laughs) It's so good. I also love Old Spruce Brewing and they have, I think Old Spruce Tavern is the one located in the village. That one just has, um, I don't know, like sandwich stuff. And they, they do carry the Old Spruce beer, but down at Silver Creek, which is like the smaller mountain that Snowshoe Mm -hmm. also owns, um, they have a full-fledged tap room and they have really good bar food down there. This sounds very much like Disney. Like I feel like it's Disney transportation (laughs) and things. So anyway, when I go, that's what I'm going to compare it to. So do you, do you have articles on your website about Snowshoe or about um, any of these hikes that you've done? Yes, I do. So I have a couple articles about, um, I think one is things to do in Davis, West Virginia, okay. um, which is where cute Blackwater town. Falls is located. Right. Yep. Oh my gosh. Davis is so cute. Yes. And then, yes, I have a few about snowshoe. I actually have um, one about lodging at snowshoe, you know, where to stay Okay. Um, and, you know, how to do snowshoe on a budget. So the only other thing I think we were going to talk about was mm-hmm. a little bit about winter place. Yeah, sure. Um, And I just want to mention that if like, if you have never gone skiing or snowboarding, Winter Place is the place to learn. Right. Um, Because I mean, it's much cheaper, you know, at Snowshoe, you're going to pay between $150 to $200 for a lift ticket, you know, per day. Right. Right. At Winter Place there, they have like a package that includes your lift ticket rentals and, um, Oh, it's a, oh, a lesson. Okay. And it's $135, all of That's that together. Um, I used to take my Girl Scouts to Winter Place and my kids went to Charleston Catholic and they had a ski team at Winter Place. So like one night a week, they went up to Winter Place. And uh, I think it is still the only place in West Virginia that has nighttime tubing. And that brings a lot of people out, oh, the nighttime yeah. tubing. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's so easy yep. to get to like, you know, hop off the exit near there in five minutes. So that's very nice. That is a big difference in, I guess, winter place and all the other ski resorts in West Virginia, because I mean, you're exactly right. It, right. Winter place is so easy to get to, but the other ones, you know, you're going to be on the back roads right. uh, for a little <laughs> while, which I mean, we love that. I mean, cause, me too. gosh, it's so pretty up there. I mean, you know, what you had asked about, you know, if I have any like hints or tips about, you right. know, getting outdoors, one of the major ones is there's no cell service in a lot mm-hmm. of these areas um, because it is the, uh, what is it, like national radio quiet zone. Right. And so, yes, there's absolutely no cell phone service. So, I mean, you know, Tyler and I will just have fun and like navigate by map and everything, but you literally do need to like know where right. you're going and, and you know, know how to do that. So, right. so uh, when I travel with Sarah, Sarah will be like, Oh, here's the sun. We're going this direction. I mean, I can figure that out after a while, but probably not just in the middle of the day. Like she's really good at that. Well, I thank you so much for being on here and thank you so much for supporting West Virginia and for buying my book. Appreciate that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I love it so far. We've oh, read, awesome. uh, read a little of it. Have you been to Camden yeah. Park? Uh, no, it's very cheesy, but it's an over 100 year old amusement park with a wooden coaster. You know, it's just, if if you were my age or your parents age or your grandparents ages, that's where you went. You went to Camden park right outside of Huntington. You can also like add on some of Kentucky right there. Ashland Kentucky's kind of like booming right now. So, um, and Huntington always has some nice things to do, but anyway, it's just an iconic place that I think you would really love. And there's also the abandoned amusement park, maybe in Lost. Is it Lost Creek? I can't remember where that abandoned amusement park is, but it's on my list for the summer. Yes. So my sister, really, my sister's very into like haunted stuff, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I am not. I, <laughs> I don't love that. But my sister really wants me um, to go to that. Uh, so yeah. I don't know. She might talk me into it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to go because the pictures look great. And the only time I've ever seen people take pictures of an abandoned amusement park is Europe. And I've had about six friends go to one maybe over near Poland or something. So I've seen that Mm -hmm. particular park a lot, but we have one in West Virginia. Okay, well, you have a great rest of the week and thank you so much for being on. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, bye. Today, we're talking with an old and dear friend. Not that he's old, but we were both wearing readers, (laughs) I think. Yes, these are readers, dollar readers. Gary Yeager. And Jerry has been a longtime friend. Um, he and my husband worked together. I think we've probably known each other for 20 years or more. It's, it's 20 years. Yeah, at least. Yeah. yeah. And Jerry, what is your job in Charleston? Not that that matters. But... Well, I'm, I'm a, a key account manager for Pepsi Cola. So I handle college universities, uh, vending companies, and hospitals. Okay. Which so... allows me to do my favorite thing, which is go to Marshall University football. <laughs> Ooh, that's just for Jerry right there. Actually, <laughs> I stopped, I was with my dad on a road trip and I stopped in Huntington and I was like, I'm going to try to get a picture of something Marshall related. So I walk up and the gate is open. So I go all the way into the stadium. Nobody mm-hmm. stops me. My dad's like, you're going to get arrested. And I'm like, oh no, like I'm a woman over 50. Sometimes it's just okay. <laughs> so I'm, I meet this guy and I'm like, I just want to take some pictures. I'm working on a book and all this. Oh, take all you want. See anything you want. So I was like, wow. So I got some primo pictures. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. They actually leave the, um, uh, the, the football gates open and you could have walked into the shoey building they've got all kinds of neat Ooh, jerseys and right. stuff for the different players that have played at marshall that are now in the, in the pros so it's pretty neat in there it's kind of like a little museum right so uh jerry graduated from marshall and did jamie graduate from marshall too she did not she went to okay. marshall but she graduated from western state okay so they both literally bleed green they know everything that has to do with marshall and i've been tailgating with them before and it is very fun <laughs> so jerry tell us something about marshall and if you can like if you could offer maybe like best seats where you like to sit at a game, any like tailgating advice or anything for coming to Huntington and seeing a Marshall game? Sure. So uh, the, the best place to tailgate at Marshall, they're very uh, receptive to people tailgating, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, the best place is the West lot, which is the main lot in front of the stadium. The uh, uh, it's They have season passes, but you can get game by game uh, parking there as well. Okay. Um, there's all kinds of lots around there, Melody. The, uh, the the bank on the corner of 20th Street and then 3rd Avenue is a great place to park as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, a good place to go before the game is Fat Patties. It's a little local mm-hmm. restaurant slash bar, which is right there beside the stadium. One of the great things about Marshall Stadium is that it, it's, it, it doesn't take long to get from where you park to where you to the stadium. 
and, right, and right. a lot of stadiums, a lot of bigger schools, it takes forever to park and walk. I mean, you'll, you know, you go to a WU game, for instance, and it's a half hour at least walk to the stadium. We're kind of spoiled in Huntington that it's not that bad. So it's a great place to watch a game, a great place to, uh, to tailgate. And real quick, fun fact, you know, it's the only stadium in the country that's named after a woman. Oh, I did not know that. That's so a great fun fact. Go and see Edwards Stadium. Okay. I'll be using that. I'm going to do some West Virginia trivia on some book events. I'll be using that for sure. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> so back to Fat Patties. Have you ever had the um, Raspberry Popper burger there? I have not. I, I tend to stick with the regular, just the Fat Patty burger and, okay. and customize it or get the chicken sandwich. But no, I have. And then obviously partaking the bar drinks but <laughs> <laughs> okay you might have had one of those before okay, so when you were at Marshall let's just go back a long long time ago okay when you're not that old but when you were at Marshall where were the places you used to hang out so the bars that I used to go to are gone so the okay. varsity it, okay. which has moved down on fourth avenue which was a great yeah. little beer and I know that location right yep right. and then uh, the double dribble which was right oh, beside yeah. it. so okay. those were the two and then the the uh, Boney's Hole in the Wall, which was the last one, which was across from Towers. So those were the three bars that we tended to go to. Uh, there was a local place called the Derby Club that we would venture into sometimes. It was okay. an after hours bar down in uh, near Owens, Illinois. But okay. those were the three that my fraternity brothers and I usually haunted while we were at Marshall. So I was a regular at Gumby's. Did you ever go oh, Okay, to yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. that, that, Jamie's the same way when she went there. She said that she used to go to Gummies. I honestly, oh, yeah. I don't know if it was clo if it had, I don't think it was even open because I went in 83 to 87. Okay. So. It probably, it probably didn't open until about 89. Yeah. It was so, so much fun. Oh, my God. Like, I used to have a blast there. And then we'd go to Ward's Donuts and get donuts around midnight. You know, that was a big yeah. deal in the early 90s. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Midnight. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. That, 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 that place was always funny. They had that, uh, that, urban legend that if the hot sign was on that means that there were yep. <laughs> ladies that you could talk to <laughs> yes exactly i remember that yeah <laughs> that's fun i, I like yeah. the throwback picture you shared not very long ago of you playing lacrosse was that lacrosse? oh yeah yeah that was actually a a, a picture from an article in, in high school that they okay. written about me and and when i grew up i grew up in the suburbs of uh of baltimore so that's okay. why i know how to play lacrosse obviously lacrosse is not a is okay. not really of West Virginia sport. We're trying to make it that it is, but it's really right. not. So you were instrumental in bringing lacrosse because lacrosse is in West Virginia. So can you tell us about that? Well, yeah. I, well, I, and I don't want to take the credit for bringing it to the state. Honestly, the northern part of the state right. was much more involved in lacrosse for a long time. For instance, WVU's had a lacrosse team for 53 years, but I was I, I helped to get the uh, George Washington team going. I helped on the first year I coached. My kids were young and you know obviously not playing high school lacrosse but i like lacrosse so much our mm -hmm. family is is a lacrosse family i just thought it would be something that uh, the valley needed and, and and it's grown a little bit more we've got a few more schools that are playing it and, and mm -hmm. gw just went out to arizona and played in a, a tournament out there it was pretty successful so That's fantastic yeah That's we're building cool. we're building it so it's a, it's a good thing going on here so our kids are Close to the same age. Mine are a little bit older than yours. But when I told Taylor I was going to be interviewing you, she said, oh, Jerry brought lacrosse to GW because that was her school. <laughs> I, that, so anyway, I did. Yeah, a fun fact, that's what she remembered. Yeah, so that's great. So you have two boys, Jarrett and Jack, and they both play lacrosse. Is that they correct? Okay, yeah, they both WVU? for WVU. Yeah, they oh. both play for the Mountaineers. So both of them, we, you know, they like lacrosse so much. We spent a lot of time and money, Jamie and I, mm -hmm. traveling. Because, again, West Virginia really isn't that much of a lacrosse hotbed. So they played club ball in the summer for a Lynchburg, Virginia team. Okay. So we spent a lot of time on the road. We did a lot of tournaments and, and uh, camps and things like that. So they've both been blessed that they're they're pretty good athletes. And they, they've really kind of taken to the game. The one, Jack, the younger, is a goalie, which okay. is – craziest position to play i mean you have to be a little bit off your kilter to want to have people shoot at you and then jared's he's the second child is he yeah. the second child there you go <laughs> exactly exactly so he's a he's a little bit he's built for it but and then jared plays attack so he's one of the guys that that score try to score at least okay um, yeah they both and they both kind of taken to it they, they they've helped teach kids they've given lessons mm -hmm. Jack's going to be working with a kid this summer from gw trying to help him with his uh, goalie skills so yeah okay. they both really love it so it's great that they ended up there together. So yeah, it, how cool it is that is. for you as a parent? <laughs> oh, well, really good. So Jared started, both of them had interest from, from other schools. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to knock my kids, but they were relatively lazy when it came to playing D1 lacrosse is a, or any right. sport is, is a, a job. 
you know, and so I just I was concerned about them getting good grades, which they both really are doing, and I'm so happy for them. But they wanted to go in, in more of a relaxed atmosphere, so it it broke their dad's heart that he went they went to WVU. But I understand because you know the Mountaineers have a good program. We play in a national club league. It's 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 we play South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee. I mean, so we play a lot of big teams, you know, and and they love it. It and it's it's more of a laid back, you know kind of atmosphere it, it used yeah. to be more of a beer drinking club but right. in the last seven or eight years they've really kind of turned the corner they're, they're, they're wanting to become a d1 program okay uh, that's awesome. at WVU. yeah because they have um so west virginia had most of the kids that go there are from virginia north carolina or new jersey and pennsylvania which mm -hmm. are big lacrosse areas so right. you know they have the kids there it's just a lot of it has to do with title nine you have to add a woman's sport if you're going to add a men's sport and the girls okay. club team is not very very aggressive so right we'll so um, fun fact, I know, uh, so I met Jerry because we owned a vending company and he was our Pepsi rep. That's so right. we sold a lot of Pepsi products. He did. So, <laughs> so just to like change it up for a minute. So Jerry would come to our house and at that time we were Diet Coke drinkers. We've switched <laughs> back and forth. I was even Diet Dr. Pepper. Was that a Pepsi product? Well, we, we don't own it, but we distribute it in West Virginia. Okay. So, you yep. know, like we, we've gone all, all through the mall. But anyway, anytime Jerry was coming to our house, we had to have Pepsi or Diet Pepsi on hand because that's a respectful <laughs> thing to do. So fun fact, when my daughter graduated from high school at GW, I don't even know what year it is. How bad is that? I'm that, that mother. Oh, well, man, we, I had, we had a big party and we had a steel drum band from WVU come. And mm -hmm. so our Pepsi rep and our Coke rep, which were two of our very best friends, were there. <laughs> and, you know, like they're the competition. So here they are. Yep. They, they literally put on grass skirts and had a dance off. Coke versus Pepsi. And I would love to have had a recording of that because uh, that was so much fun. You and John Miller. God, that was such a special. Well, moment. let's just say I'm glad you did. <laughs> but was it was fun. I, and John was a good guy. And, and I, you know, business is business. I, I don't take that stuff personally. So exactly. it, was nice yeah. meet, it was nice to meet him. And he was always a good person to talk to. But it was to. fun. And we appreciate yeah. you were around for a lot of our business functions, a lot of like really special moments. So that was awesome. Do you know and how much play, it costs to see a game? It's free. It, it's absolutely oh. free. Yeah. And the uh, they play at the rec center. So at WVU, you okay. have that beautiful recreation center. We play on the AstroTurf field behind it. Um, okay. Yeah. If you want to come see a lacrosse game, I, I think it's it's the most exciting game to watch. I mean, I played football as well, but yeah. lacrosse is just, there's just something about it. It's on ESPN plus all the time mm -hmm. on the weekends. They're right well, now, great. Great yeah, right now they're in the middle of the season. So it's a lot of great college games going on. My niece plays for Robert Morris. My nephew plays for Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. My other two nephews played at Towson. So we wow. have a lot of, we have a lot of lacrosse <laughs> in the Gagger family. Yeah. So you had mentioned rock climbing. I don't know anybody in my whole life who's ever gone rock climbing. Like I'm 54 years old and have never met anybody. So you mentioned that. Let's talk about rock climbing. Well, I, and you know, honestly, I don't know a lot about it. I just know that I enjoy watching those guys. I think they're absolutely crazy. Right. Um, here in West Virginia, we are blessed with a lot of places that they climb. Jamie and I do a lot of hiking. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the places that we do hike, especially in the New River Gorge, mm -hmm. uh, there's those walls are just free to climb all over. You know, you can climb wherever you want, in essence. Right. Um, the New River Gorge is the latest national park in the United States, and it attracts people from all over for many things. But, yeah, mm -hmm. rock climbing is one of them. And it's funny, I, I – kind of saw a thing on the news the other day that said that the rock climbing business in West Virginia has brought in over a billion dollars a year, which wow. if you think about it, is amazing. Wow. That, so all the different, wow. you know, the, the add on things, people get hotels and restaurants and right. all that kind of stuff that how the way they calculate that there's a couple in Fayetteville, there's a real big rock climbing uh, business. I mean, you know, it's right. kind of like a ski shop for rock climbing. So, I mean, it really is a big thing here in West Virginia. We're blessed with um, the environment that we have, you know, we're finally getting smart about promoting the outdoors in West Virginia, right. um, taking care of it, promoting it and bringing people in where tourism is really starting to boom in the state, which is good for us. Right. I don't think they've ever needed any help with whitewater rafting because like, seriously, no. it's the best whitewater rafting anywhere. And oh, it is. I get invited a lot to go whitewater rafting on press trips and things. Mm -hmm. And just asking about, or even in Panama, like where we are in Panama, they have whitewater rafting. And it's like class two rapids. Uh-huh. Snooze. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the class fives are, are crazy. And and uh, with gully season, we, you know, they had that season where they draw the water down on the summers of the lake. Yeah. And they, on the weekends, it's, it's out of control. People from all over the, the world come here. To, to, and Eddie and I actually did it the one time. And, and the, we were staying by the Red Bull uh, skydiving team was running the house beside ours. So, I mean, it's it's kind of neat that uh, all the cool. people that come here for that. Yeah. I think you might have been on the trip, too, where he took all those new people, business owners and things, on the, on that same trip. And no, I was most on of them that had never you. even whitewater rafted in their life. And they literally, all I think like seven of them were first timers. And they oh do that. God. Yeah. 
And I was like, what if they die? Like, we need to, like a disclaimer or something like that, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, no, they, 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 they go out of their way to tell you that you possibly could on this yeah. trip when, they're, when you're on the bus on the way heading to the river. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm excited. Uh, Adventures on the Gorge has invited yep. me to come up there. And I've never stayed there. I've just driven oh my through gosh, the property. Love it. So the I'm really anxious. It looks it. wonderful. Yeah, and it they, really is. I know they have some kind of uh, designation or something or some kind of like, I don't know. They they boast the title of being like the best outdoor recreation center, like basically on the East Coast. So I, I, or I more would, more would, offerings. So yeah, I wouldn't cool. doubt it. What they did so back when the, the was struggling, the whitewater business was struggling a little bit when the economies were down about twenty years ago. Three or four of them went together and mm -hmm. and merged and became one big powerhouse. Their yeah. property is beautiful. They have everything in the world that you could possibly do. Um, yeah. It really is, a, and we're blessed to be an hour from it. So, right. in right. Charleston, you know, so right. it's 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 really really. Neat. I, it was funny. My company, uh, we had a, a company outing, and they still mm -hmm. about it. We went whitewater rafting on the gully. And uh, people were still amazed that number one, HR would even sign off on it. Well, we didn't tell them, but uh, you know, everybody's like, Oh my God, I can't believe you guys did that. So that's awesome, though. But it's a West Virginia thing, like you know, you got to yeah. experience that. So, y'all, absolutely. Yeah, if, if you haven't done it, it's just the sound of that water is just amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, Jerry no. and his wife Jamie are powerhouses, they literally can do everything. They're so talented, they get out and see everything. And they're some of my favorite travelers, some of my favorite parents, too. In case somebody hasn't told you, like, what a great parent you are today, oh, well, I'll be the one to tell you that. Well, so, you. you've done something really special that I've always loved hearing about, but I've never done it sleeping in the train car. Can you oh, tell me yeah. what that is and how you go about doing that? Yeah, so you there's a couple different places you can do it. You can do it uh, the, in Durban, West Virginia. You can sign mm -hmm. up to do um, the train car and then also through CAS. And they'll take you up to the top of uh, the mountain up there and leave you for the night. It's such a cool experience. I mean, there's nobody around. Right. You know, it's, it, they have a little kitchenette in there and they have a, a picnic table outside. And, you know, that has a bathroom in the, in the, ca in the train car. But right. it's really, really neat. I tell you, Melody, it's something. What do you have to bring with you to do that trip? Uh, you could just just your clothes and, and okay. any food that you want to eat and drinks. Okay. And so like yeah, and everything are there? Yeah. Yeah, they take okay. care of that. Yeah. Okay, and then do you know about how far you have to book uh, to get that book in advance? It's pretty in advance. I mean, it, it's right. that, they only have the one train car, and, right. and you know they only do it in certain months of the year when the when the season when it's not too cold. Because obviously, up on top of Cheap Mountain, it gets pretty right. pretty cold at night, so yeah. they, they, don't, they don't do it in the winter time. But yeah, it's it's an experience, it's kind of a unique thing. It's a, 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 a I'm sure they do it in other places, but it's a West Virginia thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many neat things in this state that you can right. do. And, Right. There's a one that we're going to do real quick. And I'm just going to let you know we're going to. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever heard of the Sinks of Gandhi? I have so not. It's in Gandhi, West Virginia. It is actually a place where the river goes underground mm -hmm. for a half a mile, and you can literally walk through this cave in the river. It's only about ankle deep. Oh wow, that's wear, neat. Yeah, you just have to bring a flashlight, you know, or wear right. a head lamp, and then you can. And it's on private property, but they don't mind you doing it. Wow. And, uh, and you can walk through. It's it's just such a neat. Thing to do and it's that so sounds it's, really neat so west virginia so uh on, the, on a note similar to that have you ever been to that abandoned amusement park no i've heard of it but no we've not yeah. that's one of the things i haven't done you can call and get special permission to go in there so i'm hoping to do that very soon oh, that's, so that that's looks really neat. yeah that's really cool that'd be a neat thing for, to write about i'm sure i don't oh, know yeah. if you spook easy but you know especially if you can go there at dusk now you can also go to the uh um the insane asylum there oh, in weston yeah. And spend the night, which my sister has done, and she uh -huh. said she's she's kind of a she's into the uh, spiritual and the occult and stuff, and she's oh, yeah. uh, she said it was really really neat. I, I did a private tour there in January one year. Uh, it was me and Peyton, and I think maybe four or five oh, okay. friends. And so the people who took us around, the lady had worked as a nurse at the hospital for like forty years, and then her husband was the groundskeeper, so wow. there was no heat. This was before they kind of spruced up because now they're like really fancy. This is when it was just kind of bare bones. And so um, Peyton, I think, was probably in junior high school, maybe maybe ninth mm -hmm. grade or so. So they took us in and there had been no heat on for the whole winter. So we're like really bundled up oh and I have God. my real camera. And at that time, like you really didn't use cell phone for capturing mm -hmm. pictures. It's way longer than that. So right. I have my camera and I'm taking pictures everywhere. And there were several parts of the hospital you couldn't go to. But the room where apparently the child died and apparently there were a lot of children born because the men and women were, I guess, on separate sides. But. They didn't shut the, the doors all the time or keep them locked. So there were a lot of children born there uh, per, the per the nurse telling us. So this one child who died is the one that's like really the one that haunts the place. 
So in the room where the kids played and everything, they're just like a ball laying there, they're like the paint scratched off the floors and everything. It's pretty, you know, wow. pretty gross. Yeah. I all these pictures. Then I go out to the car, we're going to dinner or something, and I look on my phone, I don't see any orbs, and I'm like, you know, hoping for an orb. <laughs> then I put the com- put them on my desktop computer. Then there are the orbs everywhere. And especially oh this God. one hallway where nobody was allowed to go because the building was literally falling down. So you couldn't go down that way. And it was just a really long corridor. But there were so many orbs in that corridor. It was just crazy. So wow. that was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to go there. I'm not, I'm not right. into scary movies or scary things. So. Well, I mean, you're talking about spending the night on getting dropped off at the top of a mountain and spending the night. And I'm thinking, well, we have Mothman, we have Bigfoot, <laughs> there's Yeti. Like, I'd be scared to death myself. But <laughs> that's me. The, 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 you know, when you hear the coyotes and stuff, that is a little unnerving. But other than that, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's something that it's a pretty neat area to go check out. So I would definitely suggest somebody try it. Right. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Well, I can't wait to hear how your tunnel walk goes. That sounds really Yeah. Fun. I'll take pictures and send it to you, but look it up. Okay. The sinks again, sinks again. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And thanks for taking time out for me to be on the podcast. Absolutely. Melody. It was okay. my pleasure. Tell Andy, I said, tell Andy I said hi. I will do. Thanks. Bye-bye. You can follow along on our social channels at 100 things WV, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and you can hear our podcast wherever you get your podcasts under 100 things WV. We hope you'll subscribe.